Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and today I am excited to be coming at you with our next review. Today, we are taking a deep dive into the Surface Studio 2. As a longtime Surface user, I've been very interested to get my hands on the Studio to test it ever since the first generation. I finally decided to pick one up and check it out for myself. So I'll tell you guys this right up front. I didn't end up keeping the Studio for two reasons, but man, do I really love this machine. I don't know if I ran into bad luck or if it was bad timing with what's been going on overseas with the factory lines, but I did run into multiple units with defected screens. I saw not only 6 to 10 dead pixels on each of these units, I also saw what I call display splotching, which is when the backlight is bleeding in some areas and then in other areas, it's showing a lot of darkness, making it look like the LCD has smudges or fingerprints on it. It's something I had to let you guys know about before I go into all the reasons why I think the Surface Studio 2 is one of the most awesome multi-touch creation devices out there. I also have to say, I myself run into bad luck a lot when I get new machines. I run into defects a lot. So for me, this isn't specific to Microsoft. I've experienced defects with all brands, and a lot of times it's just luck of the draw. For example, my experience with the Pro 5 and Pro 6, that really had a low defect rate with no major issues. So sometimes it's just timing, sometimes it's just bad luck. The second reason I didn't wind up keeping it is because I know a third generation of the product will be coming later this year or early next year. While it has a killer GPU with the GTX 1060 and 1070, its CPU is quite dated right now, being at 7th generation. However, if you do want to buy this machine right now, I still think the internals are good enough to do a lot of solid creation work with the machine. So let's get into it. As I take you around the hardware, I mean, there's really no way around it. This is an absolutely beautiful design. It's a stunning feat of engineering. It brings forth both an extremely and aesthetically pleasing look while also bringing forth major function. So we have form and function here. And that's what the Surface team has mastered. That same form and function found in the Surface Pro can be found in the Surface Studio. In many ways, it feels like an extension of the Surface Pro, the larger brother to it. It's a gigantic Surface, and it's pretty awesome. The hinge is constructed in an extremely solid way. It's totally silent as you adjust it to the angle you want. It's really well built. This is a really well built machine. And while I did see issues with defects in the display, had I not, I could easily rank this as one of the best displays out there. It's extremely crisp. It has beautiful color and contrast ratios. It's just a great display. We have a very fluid multi-touch experience here that is fast and responsive. General performance on the machine was snappy. Using multi-touch is really a forefront feature here with the studio, and it feels very natural. From pinch to zoom to the variety of Windows 10 based multi-touch gestures. These gestures also make big impact when you start creating with the machine. You can see as I begin to open large art files and start working with them, touch stays intact. We don't run into any fluidity issues. It's fast and responsive the entirety of the time. And that's really one of the studio's biggest features. It's this huge multi-touch surface, but what it gets right is that responsiveness. Touch feels natural. Touch feels like it's a forefront part of the product. So we are going to start getting into the machine's performance for drawing and illustrating. I recently did a video on the Surface Slim Pen. In that video, I go into a breakdown on the modern Surface input. And I have a new video coming that goes over the best practices on how to get started with the Surface Pro and its pen to get the best results. So keep a lookout for that new video that's coming. The modern Surface input has gotten quite good. and. 
I really enjoy it now. I also love the experience when combining it with the surface dial. I think this is a great accessory and tool. The surface dial can be used both on screen and off screen. And I love the streamlines of workflow that can be created with the dial. I also use the dial on my Surface Pro 6. Uh, it's especially fantastic when you're using it in a software that is fully set up for it like Clip Studio Paint. And the same holds true for the pen. When you are using the input in software that has fully set itself up for it, you're getting a great experience here. I tested a variety of raster software. Some of those include Photoshop, Krita, and Clip Studio Paint, all which run great with the studio. But like I said, the best input experiences you're going to get with the machine are with the softwares that are fully baked for the pen input. And two of those that are really baked well for the pen input are Krita and Clip Studio Paint. Because each software has fully set themselves up for it, you're going to get a much better pen input experience in those softwares versus other softwares. So that's something to keep in mind. I tested the machine with both the 4K round pen that comes with it and the Surface Slim Pen. I enjoy both because they each have a really different feel when working with them. So now we're going to start demoing the drawing experience. And we're going to be doing this in Clip Studio Paint. This is just going to be some on the spot improvised stuff. Starting with the round pen, you can see we are getting really nice low latency here and we're getting great tilt functionality and a nice wide range of pressure input. Uh, the Surface Pen has really come a long way now and it's really good when you're using it in these softwares that are set up for it. I also tested it with a variety of the pen tips that come with the pen tip kit which allows you to get a bunch of different feels with that single round pen. So that's another awesome thing. I liked switching it up and using each one in that pen tip kit. Um, so as you can see here, as we just render a quick ball out here, um, everything's coming through really nicely here with the input with the pen. Using one of my pencil index pencils that are coming for Clip Studio Paint. Showing you guys the brush indexes is a great way to show you how much better the surface input has gotten. My brush indexes are multi-tool designed. For example, I have versions for the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil, and then I have another version designed specifically for the Surface Pro and the Surface Input. And the end results are exactly the same now with each. I work at the large scale, also at high resolution. And I put the machine to the test for that, working on images like 20 by 20 at 300 DPI, things like that, 18 by 24. And I tested this for painting and inking and a variety of different forms of working. And the machine performed well for that. In a variety of different softwares, like I was saying earlier. Uh, machine performs really good in Photoshop. I didn't see any lag when I put it to the test. So great in Clip Studio Paint, works great in Photoshop, works great in Krita. Um, and I also tested the machine with the Surface Slim Pen. And it's another thing that I really enjoy using the slim pen with the studio because that brings forth a totally different feel than the round pen because it has a new tip design and a different tip architecture. So with the slim pen, it has a different feel in hand and it meshes well with the studio. Um, what I do find is the round pen has a bit of a wider tilt angle. You do have to hold the slim pen in a specific way to reach the full range of tilt, but tilt still does work very good with the slim pen. I also want to note that the way that the studio is designed, it's designed in a way to where you can push it back and put it in that all-in-one stage, and then you can pull it forward and it will float off the table like I'm showing you here. Another thing that I found really enjoyable to implement with the studio is the Surface Dial. The Surface Dial is actually one of my favorite tools and I use it a lot on my Surface Pro 6. Uh, the combination of the dial with the studio just feels natural, it feels right. 
if you look here, you'll see that the dial is actually sliding down the screen. You do have to keep the back of the dial clean, like with an alcohol swab or something like that, uh, and then it'll stay in place. It didn't fall to the ground in my uses with it, and it also depends on the angle, but as long as you have it cleaned, it pretty much sticks in one place and stays in one spot. Now, the reason I love the dial is because it adds to these streamlines of workflow, especially when you're using it in a software fully set up for it, which Clip Studio Paint is, and that unlocks access to a bunch of different functions. As you can see, I'm able to rotate the canvas here. I'm able to quickly resize my brush with the dial. You can use the dial to zoom in and out. You can do an undo action with it. These are all the things that Clip designed specifically for the dial. And then you can go into your system wheel settings and then you can set your own custom commands. So I find that the dial has a lot of functionality. It adds a lot to streamline of workflow. So the dial is a lot of fun to work with, but it also brings forth a lot of functionality. In the experiences I've been showing you here, you can see the fluidity of the machine. At least for what I do, I found that the machine had great performance for design, for the graphic arts, for digital illustration, uh, for vector work. Also works really awesome with Adobe Illustrator. Really immersive experience with Adobe Illustrator. So I also tested it in Blender, which also works great and is set up for the pen. So you can get good experiences out of this machine. If you are a hardcore video editor that's doing, you know, ProRes stuff, 8K stuff, doing very high resolution video work, this is probably not going to be the machine for you. Um, and all around, if you're considering this machine, I personally think you should still wait for the third generation because we're going to have a much better chip in that machine, much more modern CPU, and I'm sure the GPUs will also get updated. So this i7 is okay. It's the 45 watt and it performs well, but at this point, I think the machine needs a six core in there. And if they can get one of the i9s in there, I think that would even be welcoming as well. Also, something I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention earlier, you do get a variety of ports on this machine. You get four USB 3, one USB-C, not Thunderbolt 3, unfortunately. You also get an SD card slot, and you also get Ethernet. So you do get a wide range of ports here on the back of the machine. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up our review of the Surface Studio 2. So it's a machine that I really enjoy. I think it's beautifully designed. It has an incredible display when it's not defected. It is just an engineering feat here, and I think they did great work on it. Can I recommend it? Absolutely, I can recommend the Surface Studio. Should you buy the second generation right now? That's really up to you. I think you should wait to see what they bring forth with the third generation, or they are also rumored to be bringing a display only version. So you might want to wait on that. All around, I had a great experience with the studio and I'll definitely be checking out what they bring forth next with it. And I'm excited to see where they bring the studio in the future. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like this video, it'd be great if you can share it with a friend, if you can drop a comment, drop a like, but most of all, it would be best if you can subscribe. We will be back with a lot more soon. Have a great day.